Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. This episode is brought to you by Final Flight Outfitters, an online catalog and waterfowl retail store located in Union City, Tennessee. Alexis, and welcome everybody to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Alexis, before I introduce today's guest, what is something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? Well, I've actually had a little bit of free time to research the meteorite piece that we have in the upper level of the Discovery Center. It's about 640 pounds, and it's really unique that we have it because it was saw by thousands of people when it fell in 1516, but it's really rare because most of the time when meteorites fall, no one sees it. Um, And I just think that's really cool that we have a piece of that. I also think it's um, an example of why we do what we do at Discovery Park. When Robert Kirkland first founded Discovery Park, he wanted people to be able to touch things. And so this is one of the few places in the world where you can actually go and touch a meteorite. So you see a lot of people touching it and feeling what it feels like. And so I think that's a really cool part of what we do here. So we're getting ready to take the lights down. Now, um, Luke, did you... Do the drive through or the walk? I know you did the walk through because I saw you there. I did quite a few times. I had some friends in town that haven't seen the lights any of the years, so we went through it a few times, and I also did the walk through. Yeah, I heard a lot of people say it was the best, um, the best that we have ever done. So kudos to the team at Discovery Park. We're already hard at work thinking about next Christmas. So we got twelve months to 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 play with that, but we're also hard at work taking down all those lights. Um, putting the lights up is always a lot more intense than taking them down. And I usually end up seeing a stray light or two in a tree throughout. So (laughs) our guest today is an incredible publisher of books. Lane Walker is an educator, a writer. He does a lot of things um, in the hunting field. And so I'm super excited to get to talk to him today. Welcome, Lane. Thank you so much for having me. I I always look back on it now and say it was a perfect storm. God had a perfect plan for me to lead me to where I'm at because I grew up, my dad was a, was a taxidermist as a, as a hobby in a, in a business. Um, since I was old enough to walk, we hunted and fished. I mean, we, we I've duck hunted, deer hunted, turkey hunted. Um, the outdoors were a way that we connected. We spent time together. I learned so much about life and I, I love being in the outdoors. Michigan, you know, has so many great opportunities. Uh, I grew up very rural area. Um, where hunting and fishing not only is ex- accepted, but it's really a part of life. I mean, I realize some places are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Well, where I come from, nobody believes that you couldn't hunt and fish. So it's a little bit different for different life. And where, where in, where in Michigan, where in Michigan, where are you from? Right in the tip of the thumb. So the, you know, if you're from Michigan, people always do this, <laughs> right? So I'm right in the tip of the thumb, okay. surrounded by the Great Lakes. Um, so, you know, I grew up, I played sports, hunted and fished, and it was just such a part of my life. Mm-hmm. Always knew I wanted to work and make an impact with kids since probably in fourth grade. Um, went to college to be an elementary school teacher, taught fifth grade for eight years and loved it. And that's kind of where the book started, the, the, the idea for the book started. I, I had one of my best students in the library. We couldn't find a book for him to read. And uh, I, I went to Hatchet, where the red ferns grow. You know, I, I wasn't a big reader, and I'm still not. I'm trying to become a better reader. I love to write, but reading was not something that I enjoyed. Uh, and I could relate to him, but my heart broke because he's like, I read those two books. There's no books. And he looked at me and said, you know, Mr. Walker, if you wrote a book about hunting, I would read that. <laughs> and at the time, I was writing for hunting magazines, and he knew that. You know, and, I, and I'm like, wow, that's a great idea. And I want to back up because in, when I was in college, I had a great job. I was a sports reporter for a newspaper. So that honed my writing skills. I'm an English minor and I had deadlines. So I had to learn to write pretty fast, uh, which, which was a huge help when I was starting my first book. But so as a fifth grade teacher, he said that and I kind of held on to that in the back of my mind for about two years. And people talk about having epiphanies from God. I had one. So I was laying in bed. Um, I put my daughter to sleep and she had just fallen asleep and 
the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to write this book and it's going to be called the legend of the ghost buck. And it's about these two best friends chasing this buck that everybody teases them doesn't exist. That's why it's nicknamed the ghost buck. And I got up and I went down and I, you know, then it was a desktop computer in my office. And I started to type this book that came to my mind. I, re- I typed eight chapters and I thought, you know, this is, this is something I think kids would really enjoy. And, uh, I saw it through. I wrote the first book, Legend of the Ghost Buck, and this was pre-social media. I ordered 200 copies, and I'll never forget that day. The first day I opened a box of books and saw my name. I, that was that was such a cool moment just to see my name on a book. And I thought, man, if I sell 200 copies, you know, this is a good thing, and it, you know, kids like it, then it's a win-win. Well, within two days, I had sold out of the 200 copies, and so many people were requesting more books. I said, well there's something to this. This, this, this. this is a good idea. And there wasn't a whole lot and there's still not a big niche for uh, grades ages eight through 15 readers, chapter books on the outdoors, you know, and I thought, well, that's a plus. So I released uh, two more books in, in the hometown hunters collection. So I had three books. I was traveling to hunting shows. Um, I was in Barnes and Noble on Amazon. The books were doing well. I ended up releasing uh, six total in the hunting collection. And I did that for about six years and I really put a lot of my, my heart into it and I traveled and uh, after being a fifth grade principal, right when I first started writing the books, or I'm sorry, a fifth grade teacher, I became an elementary school principal. So for five years, I worked with grades K through six. So I, I really feel like I have a good base of what kids want to read about. You know, and I always say my books aren't boring because I get bored super easy. So I try to make them exciting. So I was an elementary principal. I was selling books and crazy thing happened. Uh, I I started coaching my kids. I have four kids and I always told myself anything that interfered with me being a dad, I I wasn't going to do for myself. That was an agreement. You know, I've always felt that I was called to be a dad first and it, it just going to book shows. I would sell a ton of books and meet connections and people raved about the books, but I never, uh, I never got my big break. I was close to getting to Cabela's. Um, but I never got a big wholesale break and I was doing a lot of the sending out the books and a lot of the, I was doing almost all the work and my mom was sending the books for me. So I'm at work sending her books. And so the crazy thing is for three years, I, every April, my website would renew and I'd get a charge to my credit card. And I remember, you know, telling my wife, maybe this is the year I'm just going to take the website down and just, you know, I'll sell the books I have, but I've had a good run. And every year I heard that voice say, you're one person away. And every time I would get a doubt or something, I'd get an email from someone in North Dakota, Colorado, Canada. Hey, my, my, my kid never liked to read. Now they love to read. And I would say, okay, all right, it's worth it. If one kid's reading, it's worth it. So along the way, God put people in my life that gave me slips of hope the whole time because it, it was tough. I was grinding. I mean, I, I was selling a lot of books, but I was also a dad and a full-time principal. So I did that for seven years. Now this was back. This was back in the day. I'm assuming when you had to buy the books and pay for the books, and then turn around and sell the books. So you had a little bit of financial risk as well. I had a lot of financial risk because I, I actually, um, I, I self-published. Then a publisher came to me, and I went with a publishing company, and I wasn't happy with how it worked out because I was still promoting my books. So I ended up buying all my rights back. I said I'd rather own my rights and do it the way that I think it's supposed to be done. So I self-published. And yeah, so when I released a book, I paid for the illustrator, the editor, the writer. So when I'd go to shows and sell a ton of books, I had so much overhead that it just, I mean, it was profitable, but it was just taking me away from my family. And it was, it was tough, you know, and sometimes when you have a dream, you got to go through tough times to make it worth it. You got to go through the storm to see the rainbow. And I didn't realize what was, I was being prepared for because, uh, Everybody loved the books. And my mom would always encourage me, you know, there's a little boy somewhere that just like you were that needs this book. And I just felt compelled to keep doing it. Well, it was a year of COVID and it was the third time that my 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 website renewed. And I was really, I, I said, no, this is it. I, I'm not, you know, we were doing books still, but it was just a ton of work. And I came in contact with with a, a businessman that emailed me and said, hey, I'm a marketing guy. I think I can really take your books to the next level. Well, I've gotten tons of emails like that from people. When you write a book, you get emails from all kinds of people. And for some reason, I didn't delete it. And a week later, I went back to him and I called him. And we started talking and he does data analysis and marketing. And we just kind of hit it off. And I just had this trust because uh, 
his passion for my books and we gave it a shot. And ever since then, it, it started booming because I, I tell people my expertise is motivating kids and telling them a good story. So my partner uh, does a great job with the marketing side of it. And when, when we signed my, when I signed with him, I said, listen, I got this idea about the fishing chronicles. There's kids that love to fish. There's no chapter books about fishing. Fishing's an adventure. Fishing's awesome. And he said, write them. He said, write those books. I'm telling you right now, they'll be a hit. And I wrote the fishing chronicles. And then that following fall, they, be, they were a gold medal winner, which was super cool. Meaning they, they were the best chapter books, Moonbeam chapter books. So they won a gold medal and really excited. So since then, we've sold a lot of books, a lot of books. And uh, last, last fall, I released uh, some sports books too. And I just finished a golf book that'll be coming out in March because, uh, you know, hunting, fishing, and sports are kind of the three things that I grew up doing. And I still coached and did all those things. But really, my books appeal to kids. I really want them to, to learn a good moral, a good lesson learned, and, and see the wonder in the outdoors and the wonder of being on a team. So that's important to me. Every book has a good moral in each book. How long does it take you to write uh, a book from beginning to end? Well, that's funny because, like, I have a million ideas. I could write a book a day, but... <laughs> To get a good book is different than writing a book. I would say, you know, some books, I wrote one book in four days, the shell of it. Um, we had a couple snow days up here last winter and I had nothing going on. I locked myself and I had the story and it was, the juices were flowing and I just wrote. But uh, the golf book was very hard to write because golf's a technical sport. But I would say from beginning to end, I can have a book out in two and a half months probably. Um it doesn't take me a ton of time to write the shell. The, the, the thing that gets me excited is when I go back and revise it and add details and clean it up. Um, but that, that I would say two and a half months per book. And then do you send it to a copy editor? Yeah. So now, I mean, so, so now a lot of things, is, a, lot, a lot of things has changed. We, like I said, we're in the top 1% of all book sales in America, which is a blessing because, you know, Hunting, fishing, they're, they're niches, you know, they're, cliche, they're they're niches. And there's some people that, you know, don't love it like I do. I, I understand that, but I'm not writing the book for them. You know, I've had people that have never hunted or fished that have read the books and sent me an email and said, this is, I never even looked at it from this perspective. I'm, I'm taking my kid fishing. My, my kid read your book and now we're going to go fishing. So I know it's not for everybody, but I know there's millions of people that love and need a book like this. Um, and, and the sales have shown the, book, the the sports books have all been number one bestsellers on Amazon, which is pretty exciting. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say now I can tell a story and I can write a little quicker than I did in the first, you know, the first book. But um, I have six in the hometown hunters, five in the fishing and three in the local legends, the sports books. And I have the golf book that's going to be out in three months. And one thing that one thing that I love is that I can I can look at your books and tell it's a Lane Walker book. Um, the Fishing Chronicles all have the same brand to them. They all kind of have the same look and feel, and as do the Hometown Hunters line. All have you know. And so, it, was that that way from the beginning, or is that something that your partner has contributed? Well, that was that was one of the good things. I did get some advice. So when I self published the the first time I published the first three books had different covers. And that was one good thing that came out of a pub when I was with the publishing company. They said, "Hey, let's 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 change it. Let's do this." So that was a positive that came came out of that. And I really wanted the books to be a collage of adventure, and that's what the fishing books are, or I mean, I'm sorry, that's what the hunting books are. If you look at it, it's a collage of different things from the story. And then with the fishing books, um, I've always I'm, I'm fascinated with great white sharks, so I always wanted to write a book about sharks and saltwater fishing. And the Monster of Fairlawn Islands was the first book, and. I just saw what eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 year old sees a couple great whites in a sunken ship who wouldn't want to pick that book up. You know, <laughs> I wanted it to be real exciting. So all the fishing books, the, the fish is the main character and the center of attention. And then with the sports books, I wanted an exciting scene that when a, if a kid loved baseball, he walked by the high cheese, he's going to stop and go, what is this book? This is me. I want to read this. So I put a lot of time in what the covers look like. I work with the illustrator on them, but I want them you know, for me, when I was a kid, and even now, if I look at a boring cover, it's really hard for me to pick up a book. So all the covers are real engaging. And uh, I think that's been a big plus to at least get the book in someone's hands. Who physically, who, who is the artist that does the art? Because it looks like they're all done by the same artist, or is that just the way it looks? Yeah, well, so each collection was done by like the hometown hunters was the same guy, the fishing 
was the same person. Now the sports book's a different guy that does the sports books. And are you still self-publishing or do you have a publisher now? Well, I, now my partner, we, he has a publishing company. Um, he has a lot of books on Bakken books. So now we, he, he owns a publishing company and my books are, you know, one of his top books and, um, it's been great. He's fantastic at what he does, what he does for as far as the marketing and ads that you see. And, uh, we work well together and he gives me creativity and he, the biggest thing was he believed in me from day one, you know, and that's, that's the thing is I, there was always a sense of belief that these books were needed and they would just, they would just be successful. I just always felt like if, if I could get the word out, I, I think kids would love them. And my, my background, I've worked with kids for 25 years. You know, I've coached, I've worked with kids. I think I know what kids want and need, especially now with social media and the climate of the world. I think these books are probably more important now than they've ever been. It's crazy how your specific set of experiences and, and desires all came together at the right time, at the right place to set fire like these books have. Congratulations on that. Yeah, and... Yeah, well, I, like I said, I feel like everything I did, I didn't even realize it. Working at the newspaper, uh, you know, being a fifth grade teacher, everything was just building on something bigger. And that's what I think some people really want things. I always wanted to be an author, but you don't realize all of the, the things that go to make that successful, all the hard work, the persistence, the doubt, you know, I had to I had to have hope. Pe fans gave me hope every time that I got discouraged. I got an email from someone across the country that said, oh, my son wouldn't read. My daughter loves the books. So all those things attribute to success. And I definitely started off with the idea of selling 200 books was a cool thing. Um, I still live in a small rural area in Michigan, but um, it's really taken that and it's really blown up into this huge process for me and my family. And I love it. You know, I, I'm so thankful, and like I said, we're in the top 1% of all book sales in America. That's incredible. Um, I've got a couple more questions I want to ask you when we get back from the break, but we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back. On the hunt for high-end waterfowl products? Final Flight Outfitters is an online, catalog, and waterfowl retail store located in Union City, Tennessee. Founded by brothers John Ed, Tripp, and Kelly Powers, Final Flight Outfitters is continually expanding and growing rapidly to serve hunters throughout the country. Shop with Final Flight at their retail store in Union City, Tennessee, or shop online at finalflight.net. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, it would be so meaningful for all of us here if you would please subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And we're back. I'm with Lane Walker, who is an award-winning author and educator. I'm fascinated with uh, his life story and what he's doing now. Uh, great success with these incredible book series. Are you just doing this full time now? Is this your full time gig, or do you still are you still an educator? Yeah, no. So not, no, I'm st I'm still in education. I, I I still love what I do every day. Um, it's getting harder. I have a lot of the books have opened up a lot of doors where I have a lot of a lot of things in the mix. But no, I, I love I get to work with now I'm a director of a county uh, CTE career tech center in Michigan. So I oversee seven schools and um, I love my job. I have great people. But no, I'm still in education. But at some point, I'll do the books full time. I would love to visit schools, which I get requests all the time, but I just can't, you know, with, with, with my responsibilities of being a principal. But yeah, I mean, long term, I'd like to keep expanding on the line. I did write a book. I have one adult book that came out called Light the Fire, Inspire and Impact Kids. And I'm really proud of that. I teach PD and do different things with that book about ways that adults can inspire hope and work with kids and build powerful relationships with students or, you know, foster kids, coaching, anything. If you, For someone looking at a way to make a serious connection with kids, uh, that's why I wrote the book Light the Fire. And what's funny is that's, um, I, I saw that, that's one of the parts where we really intersect discovery parks mission to inspire children and adults to see beyond really intersects with what you're doing for the for the adults who may be listening out there do you have a few tips on on what you can do to light the fire 
Yeah, I can, I'll be I'll be I'll be as easy as I can be. Kids want to know three things: Do you hear them? Do you see them? And do they matter? That that's what their heart really wants to know. Do you see them? When they, would you notice changes? Do you notice them? Are you recognizing them? The second thing is, do you hear them when they tell you something? Are you really listening to listen or are you listening to respond? Sometimes kids just want to know someone's listening and they care about them. And then at the core of every kid, they want to know that they matter to somebody. Some families, I, I would pray every day that my four children never have to ask that question. But there's kids every day that walk through our doors that say, do I really matter? Am I? And the answer is yes. And, and, and those are the three things that I address in the book that, that, that kids need. And, and I try to every kid in our school, make them feel like those they're seen, they're heard and they matter. And in the book, there's a lot of tips and tactics of things you can, dif different things you can do. Um, it's really a, looking at your own mindset. How, you know, how do you handle adversity in front of kids? But uh, it, I've gotten great reviews on that as well. And I, I'm really happy. I go into schools and teach it to staff and different things. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, See if we can't figure out a way to get you to Northwest Tennessee at some point. Um, really, I'd love it. I'd love it. I've been to Gatlinburg. I don't know how far you are from Gatlinburg, you, but I would. You we're on the yeah, we're on the beautiful. better side of the state. Um, <laughs> so, All right. Yeah, yeah. We're in we're in the northwest corner, almost to Kentucky. Um, so, well, so talk to, to me a little bit about you for for folks that are out there that are listening that maybe want to do a book or you know have something they want to promote um, on social media. That's how we connected. Um, do, yep. do you have a, a format or a system that you go through to get the word out about your books? Because somehow, you know, you've made it in front of me now. I follow you on all your social medias now, so I see them. But somehow you got in front of me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would tell you this. <clears throat> the, the, I get a lot of people that email me, hey, I want to write a book. And, when you know, even when I said I wanted to write a book, I got some eye rolls. I've got, I got, well, everybody does. I, you know, I, so, so number one I would tell you is if you want to write a book, do not be discouraged. Or, you know, if someone's encouraging, you, you just got to do it. It comes down to nobody but yourself. I locked myself in an office. I had four kids running around. I waited till they were sleeping and I, I, I followed a dream and I wrote a book. So the first thing I would tell anybody is if you're going to be, if you're going to be about it, be serious about it and do it. And don't let the encouragement or discouragement stop you from writing. You know, I talked to someone that so many people encourage them. They just keep encouraging them. It's like a hamster wheel and he still hasn't written the book. Well, you know what? It's about, I'm about that business. We sit down and write the book. So that's the first thing I tell people is, and the second thing is I tell them, write about something you're passionate about. I mean, I could talk hunting, fishing, outdoor sports. I could talk how to build kids up all day. I mean, I love it. It, it permeates, you know, we didn't look at questions beforehand because I, did, I don't need to. I can tell you right from my heart how I feel about those things. So one is you got to believe and you got to actually sit down and write it. Two is you got to, you got to have a passion or something that is in that book where it means something to you to do. Um, and the third thing that I would tell you is you have to be realistic of what your goals could be. It, I never set out to be a bestseller. I set out to write a book that kids would love and that would make kids want to go in the outdoors. The bestseller, the awards all came afterwards just because of it was a byproduct of that. But that, that's what I would tell you. And then the social media stuff, you know, I, I got an email from the North Pole, which is crazy. I mean, I thought, so here's a guy sitting in Michigan, got an email from someone in the North Pole. But, um, yeah, we're in all 50 states. We're in all kinds of countries. But my marketing guy does a lot with the social media. So the last thing I would tell is you find the best people in that field that do that. You know, I when we first met, when I first met my partner, I said, listen, here's what I'm good with, my business partner. I said, here's what I'm good at. I'm good at writing books. I'm good at telling a story. I can guarantee you they will sell and kids will like them if like them, if you can get them in people's hands. And I found the best person to do that. And that's what he's done. Well, and we're going to uh, figure out how to get some of these in our gift shop here at Discovery Park of America, because what you're talking about is so right, you know, smack dab in the middle of our mission and in what we do here. And again, I have no doubt that a lot of the young people around here will absolutely love these. Uh, if somebody's listening and they're like, I got to get these, I got to get these. This won't air until after Christmas, but I got to get these for my next year's Christmas mm -hmm. gifts. What, where should they go? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you go to www.lanewalker.com, all the books are on my website. It's also on Bakken Books. That's my publishing comp my publisher company. Uh, it's B-A-K-K-E-N, Bakken Books. And, you know, the other great thing about social media and different things, I would encourage people to look at the reviews. 
If you go to Amazon, we also sell a ton of books on Amazon. I have great reviews on Amazon. So, uh, you know, you can go to Amazon and get the book right now sent to you in two days. All the books, hunt and fish and sports books are all in stock. And, and like I said, the, all the sports books were number one bestsellers. It was pretty cool to see my name in front of Tom Brady's and, and Stephen Curry's and some of these guys that way bigger name than Lane Walker. I'm sitting in a little, little tiny village in the thumb of Michigan, but uh, it shows me that people are enjoying the books. So you can go to Amazon, you can go to my website, um, but the books, I would love to get them in their hands. And I'll tell you this, I would love to come do a big book signing or something down there and really be a part of it. If you're going to take a risk on me and sell my books, and I think you could sell a ton of them there, I would love to come in during the summer when you have, you have something going on and do a big book signing and meet a bunch of kids from Tennessee. Yeah, no, that would be great. We'll put together something with our education team. Um, maybe do something Friday for teachers and Saturday for families and uh, really blow it up big. Um, that'd be that'd be uh, great. I know people would love it. Yeah, I would love that. So, yeah, that's kind of what I do. I can do. I, I can work with staff. I do PD, and then I work with kids as well so it's that would be awesome yeah, no that's that's count on it we'll uh we'll figure out some time this summer that makes sense for for you um i appreciate you for being here and doing this with us absolutely yeah and i this is this sounds like a perfect hometown hunters the fishing chronicles local legends light the fire it all seems like a perfect fit for what you guys are doing a lot of people have uh ideas of hunting and fishing and i, I just encourage them I would read the books before, you know, obviously any kid that loves the outdoors loves the books. I mean, but someone that maybe is on the fence or wondering what it's about, maybe grab one and just read one. Maybe open up your mind and see what the benefits are. I I learned so many lessons by walking through a swamp to duck hunt or climbing a tree and watching the sunrise with a bow in my hand. A lot of the books aren't about just killing animals or catching the biggest fish. There's a lot of life lessons that'll help kids in, you know, grades fourth through 10th grade. So, and that reminds me, I had one last question. Uh, do you still get to okay. do much hunting or are you working so hard writing books that it's taken the back seat? Well, that did become, that did become a problem. So um, my, my my twins are in juniors in high school. My daughter, my other daughter's a freshman and then my son's seven. So uh, I do a lot of hunting with them around the house. But I, yeah, my heart kind of yearns to be in Illinois bow hunting and in Texas and Colorado elk hunting and the crazy thing with the books, I have connections now all over I could hunt. Um, but the time factor is 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 one that uh, in a couple of years, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do all those things. But I still hunt a lot. Absolutely. I just don't get to go out of state very much. Um, but heck, I'd love to hunt in Tennessee. You never know. Yeah, we'll get you down here to go uh, duck hunting on Real Foot Lake. Oh, I would love that. I'd love that. So, so the Day of Rain Ducks, book five, will be a big hit down there. I can promise you that. Wow, that's excellent. Thanks to all of you listeners who joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.